Welcome everyone to the next video in our series of videos about the uh, accounting software, small accounts, which we've been developing. I uh, hope you've been following along. We're now on to, I think we're on video 11 now. I can't remember. I'll, chip, I'll put that in the comments or the title at least. Um, we've been looking at building an account, uh, like a small bookkeeping software program, a web-based one from scratch. And we've been looking at uh, various aspects such as the nominal ledger that, and off from that the trial balance and so forth. Today we're going to go in a slightly different track. We're going to look at another part of the accounting software backend and that is the glamorous world of stock control. So let's get started. Stock control. It's uh, a black box really in a sense because it, uh, it <laughs> there's so much goes on to achieve what appears to be a lot less uh, to the user, to the operator of the software. So it, in, in effect, we have to design, we have to effectively over design to produce the results we want. Uh, I know in the last video I talked about maybe looking at going into UI and interaction with the website, but I, I want to stick with the data for the time being in case you're wondering why we're not doing that this time. Uh, but I do want to move into a different area. And for me, stock control is the next place to go. It's, it's one of the next core areas of a site. I know many businesses don't really use stock control. Um, I am curious about that actually, because um, I, I, I suppose for small businesses, the overhead of managing stock is probably a bigger con than the pro of just sort of doing it as you go along you know what you know what you uh, are familiar with perhaps how much you're using uh, how much things cost maybe don't change that much or, or you don't have many components that make up things that you then sell on so stock control might be a bit of a uh, for some like a bit of a, a waste I suppose well, uh, it could be, and I'm certainly certainly not going to say that your business needs stock control. But what I do believe is, if if it was done in a good way, I think you know the the, the boundary as to people who don't have you stock control and those who do, the boundary would shift perhaps a little bit just to include a few more people who may not have thought of having stock control, but because it's done in a good way and a consistent way may just sway some people to use it and then they you know hopefully they look back and go yeah that was a good decision so yeah i'm not i'm not going to say this is a, a a solution for everyone many businesses just even stock based businesses just don't suit stock control um but we're going to have a go anyway we're going to have a go and then ultimately we'll branch out into other overlapping areas like sales orders purchase orders and delivery notes and stuff like that so there's lots to do so um, let's see. Let's just start first of all by, by building some core tables. We'll, we're probably going to get them. Uh, well, well, not, I was going to say wrong. Maybe not wrong, but they're definitely going to be incomplete. But I just want to scheme out some raw tables in our uh, database as it stands. So, um, yes, let's clear this out. So let's do uh, PHP. I'll tell you what, let's just have a quick look at the code, what we've got at the minute. So at the minute we've got, oh, some of these models are uh, Laravel Jetstream that we installed, so we don't need to worry about them like membership. Um, I think membership was a Laravel Jetstream. Yeah. Uh, so nominal account, nominal header, nominal transaction, purchase ledger, purchase ledger line, sales ledger, sales ledger line, and user although user sort of inherent in a Laravel app anyway, so it, it's used in all areas. But user is the person who logs into view. We're not really using that at the minute. Um, when we start scaffolding the actual interface, well, this will come into play, but for now, it's not, we're not really using it. Um, so yeah, the, if you wanna know how these models are being used and the kind of things we've done with them, please check out my previous videos in this playlist, the small accounts one. Um, and yeah, you should get a bit of a background. So it's, it's, as I say, it's, we're on about video 10 or 11 now. So um, so good. So that's where we are at the minute. So let's scheme out some new ones. So let's bring my terminal up. There we go. So it's PHP artisan 
uh, make model minus m minus m gives us our migration i'm just thinking um i'm tempted to go into like a subfolder here for stock control because it it's possible this folder could get very large in fact some of this could have gone into a subfolder but i'm wondering if the stock control ones could go into their own folder no oh, i don't know no no let's leave them out for now we can always refactor that later famous last words um so let's say make model minus m now before we start diving into even this part of it let's just break this down into um its basics we obviously have to cater for businesses that have no stock so they'd be like service-based industries businesses that maybe don't have stock but do have price records so they have may like may have like day rates hour rates um so there's like it's a service but there's a rate that goes with it and they might want to keep that rate as a price record they might want to keep a price matrix so different customers may get different rates depending on you know just there's the, what's being agreed or maybe on a quantity base you know if you, if you hit a certain turnover your rate you get a better rate or something like that any number of reasons why so you've got the basic core don't really have a rate and we just input a price in sales invoice then we have the price record which is a rate but it's not associated with a tangible item that would be considered stock then we have the stock record where we do have a price and it is associated with stock quantities so you can see for those last two there's definitely a pattern isn't there there's definitely a similarity so we could incorporate those two into the one um but that first one doesn't even have a price record so you know that might be in a scenario where random you know well, not random <laughs> um but you know uh prices are just put into an invoice on an ad hoc basis you know there's no need to store it as such um you know there are scenarios where that is the case people don't want the hassle of looking up a product they'll just charge them a, a fee and that's what's agreed and that's fine so we want to really concentrate on on the last two they're the two we're looking at let's see what can we do see the other thing we need to bear in mind is like things like bill of materials so you know if you could be a business that takes component a and component b you apply your own service to that to produce product c and you sell product c so you know is is that a process we factor into the to the accounting program well you know yeah ideally that will be something in there as well so then that's a process that needs to be incorporated into the accounting software so th th there's lots to do there's lots to do and this is certainly going to be the first of many sub videos of this particular section of the site well let's just start with the basics so um let's start first of all with um you could have raw materials you could have finished products you could have components there's all different things they could be called so we need to i think we need to generalize that uh which is difficult to do so i'm going to call it item just very simple an item is any raw material that is used in a process to make another item or even just directly sold on you could buy an item in sell it out for a profit hopefully um, but the item is also the finished product of a combination of one or more items and no or some service so the item is also the finished product that can go out so basically it becomes one big table of items some are used as, as part of as ingredients shall we say for components some are just sold straight on but some items are the finished product that you sell so we're going to call that item very straightforward so item is effectively the 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 price record for for the item the item table is like it's like the header information so let's see to illustrate this let's let's say it's a um well a friend of mine used to work in a fencing place many years ago and he had uh, an item called a, a timber sawn post that was a fence post 
So that could be an item. A timber sawn post could be an item, and they just simply sold it on as as a sellable item. And um, you know that was how their stock control worked. So that's, that could be an item. An item could also be um, what what could you buy in bulk and use a bit of? Maybe maybe a sheet of aluminium metal. Then your company could punch products like a, like a punch like a cookie cutter cut out these products from that aluminium to produce stuff. So the sheet aluminium would be the item and the finished products would be an item. So an item then, we then have to think about, well, how do you measure its quantity? You know, how do you, uh, how is it all transferred from one item to another? If it's manufactured, you know, if there's a process, Hopefully we'll get to all of that a bit later, but I just want to get into the into your head the idea of what an item is. It's any any component or any finished product that goes through the process of being treated or sold uh, for the purpose of, of of the business. So that's what we're calling an item. Now, the next thing I think we need to look at are the actual stock levels of the item. Now we could be very simplistic about this. And if we go to the item model, uh, not the model, the migration, we could, oh, do you know what? I never checked if I had the Git up to date. Uh, let's just let me check. Uh, yes, okay, so that's just the one we've created now. That's fine. So yeah, the Git's up to date. Now, uh, so we could be very simplistic about this and say, oh, quantity, well, what we could do in the item table we could have an integer called quantity and let's say we give it a default of naught now that's really straightforward isn't it jobs are good and if we get in any in we just up the value of quantity if we sell one we decrement it you know we take one off or however many we sell and that that's great from a simplistic point of view of track and quantity. The problem comes when we want to start doing things like tracking the value of what of the stock we have, uh, especially if the price fluctuates over time, depending on when you buy something. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of that now. In fact, as we progress, you'll probably see what I'm talking about in future videos, if not this one. But this isn't going to cut it, basically. Simply having a quantity value on the stock table or the items table isn't going to suffice for a, for a decent software program. Now, that's not to say we can't use a quantity field here as some kind of snapshot, perhaps. You know, we could do, we could do a quantity and then we could do a... Uh, we do a timestamp, for example, and then say quantity quantity at... So we could say at a certain point in time, the quantity for this item is this. So it's like a snapshot. And then you could see any future transactions since then that adjust that quantity. Now that's an idea because it means you're not sort of interrogating the transaction history of the stock every time you want to get a current up-to-date balance of how much is in stock. Imagine if you had three, three years of transactions of stock quantities starting at zero, and it's like that all the way through the three years. And you want to get how much stock you've got. And you have to go through three years of records so that you can work out what the current stock is. Well, you know, an interim value at a, at a point in time would obviously be great. Because if you had it at the end of last month, a value of 10, then you know you only have to go with 10 plus or minus the difference in the current month. A bit like a bank statement. You know, a bank statement, you have a balance out every month or however often. And then you only have to look at that month's transactions to add, to add or to subtract the difference. So, you know, we need to, you know, this could be an option. Um, so what we'll do for now, I'll just leave it there, but I'll comment it out so that it doesn't just affect what we're doing right now. But we might come back to this and may even make it uh, in a different way. But, you know, we'll come back to that. Uh, oh, yeah, let me comment out the quantity as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a separate table that holds um what can we call it like batches batches of quantities i suppose is the best way to call it 
So uh, let's let's do that. I'll, we'll create the table and then we can sort of start creating the relationships that go with that. So I'm going to call it batch. Okay. So a batch is definitely going to be belong to an item because a batch of, a, of an item can only be for one item. So we know we can put a uh, item ID in here. Now, a colleague who I work with, he is a big fan and he's quite right. It's something I don't do. He is a big fan of putting the foreign key constraints in the table schema and I should do that. I've never really got into it, to be honest. I always just sort of rely on the code to do it. If I think on and I do a bit of research, I might sort of come back to this in a future video and add some constraints in there. For now, we're just trusting that the code will do it. But it's, it's something I need to do. Um, so anyway, so yeah, a batch definitely has to belong to an item ID. So on that basis, let's go to the models. And we can say... Uh, public function item ooh what happened there public function item return this and it belongs to item okay very straightforward. Uh, conversely, the item can have many batches. So public function batches. And we can return this has many uh, batch. Okay, so that's nice. That fits in nice with our uh, schema as well. So uh, the item has many batches, so the batch will have the foreign key. So that's fine. So the batch then, let's have a think about this. Um, so remember we said the item was the price record. The batch is in effect the uh, like the ledger entry. If you looked at the previous videos as to how we dealt with the, the ledger, the item is like the nominal account. So like sales or purchases or bank account. And the batch is like the transaction table. So, you know, £10 in here, £20 out there. The batch is like a quantity movement for, for the value. But the difference is that because it's a tangible quantity, we... Uh, and because the the value is associated with the bought product we have to treat it a little differently and you're going to see that as we go through so let's say we have we order and this will eventually go in the purchase orders when we get to that so let's say we order a hundred of a particular item so the batch will store the item id obviously the timestamps will track when that happened no doubt there will be some kind of foreign key to um, an, an order, so foreign key to order, which we'll sort out later on. Um, but the other two things it's going to have, well, at least two things, is the quantity. Now, remember we said we could have put that on the item table, but we're not going to. So we can put that out here, quantity. And we'll put that as a default of naught. It should never be naught, but it, I'd rather it be a naught than a, a nullable in this case. I want it to be a quantity. Um, oh, in fact, in fact, no, a quantity of one default would be better. We'll always set it unless it's just one, so that's fine. But I also want to put a remaining, which will also default to one. Now, so um, now I've put default one, but imagine if imagine if this was a hundred. Okay. So we get a hundred. So we order a hundred of an item, 
and let's say uh, over the course of a week we use 10 of them so what will happen is somewhere we'll, we're, we're going to in a minute create another table for how that stock quantity is used but then this batch is where we keep the balance so we'll say we ordered 100 but now remaining because we've used 10 we only have 90 remaining so this will always remain the original order quantity that that never changes but this one will change based on the usage of the item now why is that the way we're thinking of doing it well let's add another table here uh another field sorry now i always like to put money even as an integer and then multiply it or divide it by 100 accordingly because integers just store better than fractions in my opinion i think i did it with the other did I do it, do it with the other fields? Uh, yeah, so I did it here, divided by 100 and multiplied by 100. So yeah, it's it's sort of what I do. Uh, so let's close that down. Um, okay, so one and one, let's put that back as it is. So we want we want this, this field here. Now, I think the best way to do this it's very tempting very tempting to put a pay item price as, a, as the price field here because then you just multiply by the quantity to get your value but there may well be times when you get a batch of an item and you get a job price like a, a price for the batch rather than an individual unit price it's you know for whatever reason you just manage to make a deal and he says oh okay knock a fiver off or something and it but the fiver doesn't divide equally over the items and um yeah so i'm 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 gonna do it as a complete amount so i'll just put it as total i am gonna just put that as naught it always will be set manually anyway but i'll just put it as naught just just for argument's sake there may well be a situation where it is naught but we have to track the stock but for some reason we've got it for zero so you know that works um so now the reason why i've got the total is let's say we get the hundred so that will give us a hundred there but let's say it costs us i don't know let's pick an arbitrary figure 82 pound uh 82 pound 45 now, obviously, if you were to divide that by 100, you would have uh, 82 pence, 0.45. This isn't going to work, is it? And because then you have to start dealing with fractions of pence and, you know, rounding issues occur. And, you know, uh, we're not saying we're going to completely eliminate rounding issues, but we want to give ourselves a fighting chance to keep an accurate record. So... Um, what I'm thinking is, is if we put the total in for the 100 and then w whenever we want to sort of um, get a price, we just sort of use a simple formula. So let's say we've used, uh, let's take an arbitrary figure here. So let's say uh, 86. So let's say we've used 14. So we know if ever we want to get a price of what's used or what's left, we basically say um, it will be in this case 86 over 100 which is this figure here so proportionally we have 86 left of the 100 so we can say 86 over 100 multiply the total which is 8245 and that will then give us the value of the stock left the 86 that's left which you know when we come to stock valuation in our trial balance later and so forth that's going to be important for us so this way any given batch we can get a value now this comes into its own even more once you have multiple batches because imagine if you got 50 from one supplier at a price and 100 from another supplier at a different unit price because you bought more, you got it slightly cheaper. You know, dearer, obviously, because there's twice the quantity, but slightly cheaper per unit. Well, then, 
because we now have those two entries as two separate batches, two separate batch entries in our table, we can do this formula for each batch and then just simply add up the two values. Uh, that way we get an average per batch, which will give us an accurate value then for any valuation we need of the stock. Equally, we can do the uh, uh, how would we do, do that? 100. If you wanted to see how much was used, we do 100 minus 86, which is quantity minus remaining, all over quantity multiplied by the value. And that'll give us the value of what's been used. And again, if you're using a accrual based system for stock control, which we'll cover another time. But basically, you could buy a load of stock in this month, but you only account in your profits the cost of the stock that you've actually sold in this month. I think that's called the accrual method. So you'd need to know the cost of the stock you've sold, which in this case would be the 14. So th there's, th there's different reasons why. Now, I'm assuming you may have some knowledge of accounting in order to sort of be watching this video. If you're a complete, you know, novice that's fine i'll try and explain it as best i can but you know, you know people go to college for you know months and years to learn this kind of stuff so d don't worry if you don't get it immediately but you'll you'll see it all come into play as we develop and you'll see exactly what we mean and the reason why we're doing it this way you know batches and whatnot so anyway that's what we're going to do so let me just reset these back to what they were okay that's cool so that's our batch. Now, um, we could start working with this now. Let's go to the cedar. Uh, well, no, let's just go to the other migration for the item. Let's just stick a few bits of info in here. So we, we, we remember we're not using this in the item table anymore. So let's just put in a string called name. Um, uh, that'll do for now we just need the bare minimum so we need a string called name so let's just populate the the fillables so public um oh no it's protected isn't it protected fillable equals so that's going to be quantity remaining amount so that's our fillable for the uh, batch so let's go to the item and f here we're just doing name for now again as I've said this will pad out over time but we just need to get the thing rolling so now let's go to our cedar uh, that's not our cedar and let's start with some stock control call it stock so let's create a stock item first of all so item equals item uh, where's my item app models item so let's create um, we're just going to put a name in here so name equals uh, let's see. Oh, rubber duck. Okay. Very kindly got given this as a gift. A rubber duck. Essential for anybody who wishes to code. Rubber duck. Rubber duck programming. Just checking it's on the camera. Yeah, there we go. It doesn't squeak this one though. It's one of them ones that tells you the temperature of the water. So I think it's designed for a younger audience. But absolutely essential for any coder. Right, okay. So... Uh, let's call it, so the name is Rubber Duck. All right, cool. So that's the item. So let's create some batch entries now. So we can say item batches create. And we want quantity, uh, let's say 100. 
Now, what I'm going to do for this one, I'll do the 100, okay? And then you can see how it works on differently on the other batch when we come to it. So let's say that was £45.54. I don't know. So let's create another one of these. And we can say, right, we only got 50. Uh, but we've only got 35 remaining and 27. Let's, so let's make it half and a bit, say £32.45. Okay. So we have two batches now. So let's run the migration. Let's just make sure that works. Uh, where's my code? So PHP Artisan. Uh, Okay, let's just check the database is fine. Should have two new tables. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So there's our item, rubber duck, and our batches. So item ID one. So quantity and remaining 100, 100. Ah, now, yeah, we didn't do the price adjustment in the model, did we? <sighs> Forgot about that. Okay, so that's easy. We'll just copy it from the nominal transaction because it, we're sneaky like that. Um, can just copy that whole two methods there so if we go to batch and uh, we'll call this total and that's total and that's total uh, righty I think that's it let me just run a migrate again yeah no errors so items is as is and batches is great 45 pound 54 because we divide that out when it comes out so that's brill so um what we can do now is uh we could do a creating a view actually so let's uh what can we call it let's just have an items view i think so let's go to the root file uh, the roots, sorry, roots web. There we go. And uh, let's go for. We need to start tidying this up soon. So root um, get. We'll just say items. We'll just get a list of items for now. And that can go to actually. Let's comment that out because we need to make the items controller. So PHP artisan make controller items controller. Uh, you can say model equals item. I think that's how you do it. Should create us the crud. Yeah. Okay. So and we'll just put it in here in the index. Oh, let's go back to that root file. Uh, where are we web so now we can say um, items controller oh no actually no we need to put it in a square brackets don't we items controller class comma index uh, yeah let's just remove that Okay, cool. So slash items now will give us uh, should be anything other than a 404, even if it's an error. I don't mind that. Uh, oh, well, a blank page. Okay. So that's because we don't do anything with our items methods here. So what we're going to do is return inertia render we'll just create an items page in the view section items uh why is that underlining oh i need to change the return type yeah okay so let's go down to our pages 
yeah I'm gonna create a folder now so let's do items index because this this is gonna get big so we'll create a new folder here call that items and then we'll create inside that the view component which is index cool let's just see that that works So if we reload that, we get nothing. Why do we get nothing? Error cannot find module items index. Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgot to compile, didn't I? So uh, let's put that back there. However, I've just realized part way through this playlist we moved across to Jetstream which means we don't no longer use normal views we use uh, inertia but I haven't changed them here so that's some refactoring we're gonna have to do at some point anywho uh, let's see I'll just have a quick drink while I'm okay it's done Go and grab a quick drink anyway. Lips are a bit chapped today, so I'm going to grab a drink. Let's uh, render that and we have index. So, yeah, it's found on the page, so that's fine. So, have I not done anything else in. Oh, yeah, Sales Ledger. Oh, no, I have done some stuff. Okay. It must have been the early stuff I haven't done. Uh, so, how did I render the layout on that? Did I just do. Oh, I haven't. I haven't used the layout. Okay, so we are just very crude number rendering. Okay, so let's put that inside there. Uh, so we want, um, we'll call that items. And what we'll do is we'll do li and then we'll put that in a v4 equals item in items. Now, we can then say, uh, let's see, let's just call that items index. Um, items uh, type is array default. empty array so let's go here and say items is basically item um, yeah let's just get it all what we do need to do is just add the batches as well so with batches I shouldn't get any PHP errors with that no okay so let's render this out then so uh, let's close some of these uh, batch nominal transaction um, database the page ledger items index okay so v4 item in item uh, so let's see you're gonna have the item dot name and then we need to how are we going to show this because we're going to have multiple batches per item aren't we um, um, okay for now I'm just gonna do a sub loop here. So V for equals item uh, batch in item dot batches. And then here we'll just do batch dot total. Okay, this should be interesting. 
Uh, yeah, okay. So let's just put some styling on this. Class equals flex, flex row, uh, justify between. Uh, uh, okay, well, it's what I want to put, it doesn't look great. We'll come back to it. Let's just bring it in. So, okay. So we have rubber dog, and then we have the two batches associated with that item. So that's cool. Uh, we could probably do it putting the quantities in, actually, thinking about it. So let's uh, put that in. So, no, that's going to be in this LI, isn't it? So. Um, so div, um, so for each batch, you're going to have the batch dot quantity. Oh, uh, batch dot remaining, and then. Batch dot total, and again, let's just put a let's just put a flex in there. I don't actually need flex row here. I think it defaults to that. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's just put a justify between in there, though. Uh, okay. Um, let's give it a bit more space. So let's say, uh, in fact, let's just get rid of that div. Don't need that. And if we just put a width on this. with let's try and make it a strict fifty percent um that didn't work so what we'll do is we'll just copy that over to the ul There we go. All right, that'll do for now. So, um, so we have the item, we have the quantity, the remaining, and the total original value of the quantity. Now, um, so what we can do now, for example, uh, let's put some headers in here because um, how's what's going to be best way to do that? We do that on an li. And then if we just do three divs, so if we say quantity, oh, remaining, and then total, uh, and if we just put that styling on here as well. Not sure if that will line up right. I can't remember how this works. Oh yeah, okay. So that's work fine. But you see now what we can do is you can say, well, what if we want to know that was the that's the current that's the value of when it was bought. But what if you want to know the value of what's left now, and the value of what's been sold? So we can add two more columns. We can say. Um, uh, let's say, let's call it current and sold. And let's have two columns here. But here, what we're going to do are effectively computed values. So if we go back to the batch model, and what we can do here is say, okay, public 
function uh, what did we say current uh, now let's change that to get oh I am not called the shaky coder for nothing get current attribute and then we can say uh, so let's put value in there actually no we don't want value because we're going to arbitrary, arbitrarily arbitrarily work out the figure so we could say return this attributes so the current is what's left so that's uh, quantity no remaining multiplied by this ah no this remaining over this oh what's happened there this quantity multiplied by this total and then if we set up a uh, poor protected appends and we just put current in there so that should now add that to the list of fields that get passed down so if we put current in there I'll leave that as total, that last one for now, until we've done the other one. Let's see. Uh, we have a error. Get current attribute. Have I done it in the right model? Ah, typo. Okay. Here we go. So current, ah, no, it needs to be, um, I didn't realize. Oh, I wonder if it's just this remaining to utilize the, the already divided by value. Oh no, it's not that, that I'm bothered about, is it? It's this. Is that right? Yeah, current 4554. Um... Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Is that right? Thirty-five over fifty multiplied by thirty-two. Let's have a look. So thirty-five over fifty is point seven multiplied by. 32 power 45 is 22 71 50 yeah that's right so that's right that is now the current value of the 35 oh excellent so then if we do the other one was sold wasn't it so if we just copy that and say get sold attribute and remember the formula here was just to take it away from the quantity first so we copied that paste that and wrap that in brackets and then just add sold as in the appends here and then in our view we can say sold I'm not happy with how it's lining up so I might change how we render this but that's not important oh okay 
so that's multiplication for you so let's just tidy up the math uh, let's see so let's do um, um, what's going to be the best way to do this multiply by if we do attribute that and then no 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 let's round this off I think that's how you do it I think that's how you do it yeah there we go so that means nine pounds seventy four plus twenty two seventy two ah now you see that's one forty forty six so that would be thirty two forty six so there is a slight rounding issue there already just because we're multiplying by a like a dubious number but we're talking about a penny and hopefully you know the rounding's never be going to be more severe than a penny on any given transaction um I'm happy with that, certainly at this pay, pay, um, part of the development anyway. So that's cool. I think that we'll do for this video. We've got the ball, ball rolling with stock control. So we put an item in, some batch quantities and some values. And at some point, we'll be able to translate these values to the nominal accounts. We'll assign a nominal account to a stock item. And then these values can be transferred or, or referenced by that nominal account in trial balance and the corresponding transaction will be the either the purchase ledger or the bank account because obviously we'll have had to buy this stock at this value so that'll be the double entry thing for that but this is great I'm quite happy to leave this video here uh, we've got the basics of stock control going that's good we uh, I do need to change how that renders because I can see the columns going all over the place but I'll We'll, we'll sort that in the next video and we'll carry on with the stock control side of things and develop the different tables that might be needed going forward so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching whatever time of day it is for you wherever you are in the world um please like the video if you found it useful uh, subscribe is a really good thing for me because it just shows that people are interested in these videos and it means that you know it's worth me continuing um, but yeah, any comments as well you want to stick in the videos, more than welcome to, to chat about those. There was nothing since the last one, so there's nothing to discuss at this time. But any any comments that go in related to all of this, you know, let's happily chat about all of that. Um, until next time and the next video in this playlist or one of the others, thank you for watching. See you again soon.